and welcome back to Murder on the Orient Express. Um, if the last video and, you know, this start bit are a bit muddled up, it's because, you know, the timings are a little bit off and stuff. I'm doing a big session, so most of the time I'll be um, saying goodbye at the wrong time, etc. But um, I'll endeavour to try and get it right. Maybe I'll be able. One plan. What I'll try and do is get it so one section, so, yeah, one section of the story, as it were, is per sort of part. But the lengths might vary quite a bit. I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with it. Sakeki is more than a train station. It is a work of art, all its own. Yeah. Oh, there's a bit of FPS lag. Marble floors, barely worn by the feet of thousands of passengers. Hmm. It's quite nice. It's probably a massive understatement, who knows. Okay, that goes back out there. Let's go over here. Oh dear. Yeah, there's definitely FPS problems. I am sorting out the footage from the last video in the background, so if there's a bit of FPS problems that's why royalty the rich and famous and infamous have all walked these halls okay so well, let's look out for the yeah, infamous and avoid them oh dear there's definitely FPS problems Poro there he is get him catch him stop that man oh Poro music every time. Okay, they're gonna stop me, aren't they? Let's run for it. Run. Keep away. Mary. No. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, when it's behind us, then. Well, what are you waiting for? Don't let us stand in your way. Oh, so they're not gonna block my path. That's a rarity. Sakeki is more than a train station. It is a work of art, all its own. Yeah, but works of art don't have any use other than decoration. And uh, this does. It's a train station, therefore it sort of, you know, has to have a purpose. Otherwise, it would be a bit useless. Tickets, please. Oh yeah, tickets. No one may board the train without a ticket. Yeah. I must be making an inventory of my possessions. Everything, it gets lost. Oh, so she's not going to get on the train. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I can do some. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. I have more important things to. Okay. Oh, chat. Posters of Istanbul's attractions welcome arriving passengers. Oh, what's this? I packed so quickly, I hope I remembered everything. Oh, is that oh is that our train? Looks a little bit like luggage from Discworld. Only it's like more ornate and it isn't half homicidal maniac. Passengers baggage. I confess I've always wanted to peek inside to share the lives of my fellow travellers, but I doubt I'll ever have the opportunity. I have a feeling that at some point during the game that I will have to look inside there. Proro, come back! Proro! But I must travel this evening to London. It is of the most importance. My friend, Monsieur Booth, director of the line, assured me of a room aboard the Calais coach. I am sorry, Monsieur. It is incredible. It is off season, yet the world elects to travel tonight. Not a single room remains. Oh dear. Poro is not going to be happy about that. Pardon me, Messieurs. I'm Antoinette Marceau from the Istanbul office. Are you quite well, Mademoiselle Marceau? You are flushed and winded. You're chasing. I'm fine, you. really. It was something of a chore to catch up to the train. Right. The train. It does not move. <laughs> It does, just not. Mademoiselle, 
Please tell the gentleman the Calais coach is full. Get on the train, just leave him. No. What is your name? Pierre Michel, mademoiselle. I've seen your name on reports. Your record with the company is excellent. Thank you, Mademoiselle Marceau. I always strive to do my very best for my passengers. Then strive now, Michel. Perhaps Monsieur could sit up in the salon car for the beginning of this journey? Please give Monsieur Poirot room 16. It is taken, Mademoiselle. But number 16 is always kept in reserve for such emergencies. Nevertheless, tonight it is occupied by an American gentleman, uh, a Monsieur Hardman. He does not sound like someone to be trifled with. <laughs> we must find a room for Monsieur Poirot. Mademoiselle, if I could construct an additional compartment, I would. <laughs> Let me see your passenger manifest, please. I have an extra plan of the Calais coach with all the passengers listed. Take it by all means. Okay, so oh, guess like spike. As you can see, every room is filled. There are extra beds. Only two, in Mr. McQueen's room, but he has paid for a single. And Miss Olsen's room, but I hardly think Monsieur Poirot. No, merci. I would not think of it. Of course. Yeah, that would Good day, be monsieur. appropriate. Well, I could go with the man. I'm just going to move some stuff. Um, just, just moving some stuff out the way. My legs are a little bit cramped. I'm on the sofa downstairs. Yes, yeah, because uh, it's too hot upstairs, my laptop overheats, and that would be bad for recording. Because, you yeah, know, crashing in the middle of footage, not exactly the best thing. Okay, so I've got some leg room. Back to the thing. Uh, if there was a jump in the video just there, I was just moving some stuff. Um, let's talk to Proro. Okay, saying that probably won't be the best thing. Oh, what? <laughs> Just leave him behind. <laughs> Poor Poirot. Um. Monsieur Poirot, I place myself entirely at your service. You know Poirot? Who would not recognize the most famous detective in the world? You are very kind, mademoiselle. I have a passion for crime. You enjoy the study of it, I hope. Not the committing. Oh, the study, the gathering of clues, the questioning of suspects. Oh dear. Merely what the Americans call the footwork. Legwork, I believe, monsieur. Not As thinking. Say, I prefer the detection that occurs here. The little grey cell. Oh, the little grey cell. My scrapbook yep. contains many accounts of your cases. That mysterious affair at Styles, the death of Roger Ackroyd, the noted businessman, Lord Edgware's murder. Oh, I remember. Forgive me, I'm rambling. I have actually just yesterday I watched the episode of Horror where it was uh, Lord Edgware eating carpet, well, eating tiles actually. Um, <laughs> to make him die. Well. So, <laughs> you. Well, that would be the right thing to do. Give Monsieur Poirot my room. I will be quite comfortable in the salon car. Mademoiselle Poirot, he will not hear of such a thing. Oh. I insist. I will not compromise the hospitality of the train. Oh, if I must turn you out, why then you will stay in the room of Miss Olsen. I am sure she will not mind when she learns of your sacrifice. No, really, it isn't necessary. No. Poirot has spoken. The matter it is settled. Okay, so... I will speak to the lady at once. Well, Poirot's got me. Oh, 
Oh. In cutscene. Oh, it's that woman from earlier. Oh, plural. Oh, it's a cleaver. Loin of this, leg of that. I am not eating the flesh of the animals. In America, if it has fur, we either eat it or wear it. As my daughter always says, there's a lot America could teach people in other countries, if they'd only wake up and listen. She says one day you'll be able to go into a restaurant in Istanbul and order a hamburger. What do you think of that? Why would you want to do such a thing? Why? Everybody wants a taste of home. I expect the Turks would agree with you. Exactly. That's what my daughter says. It's only a matter of time and Turks will love hamburgers. You will be sufficiently amiable to place in my compartment a bottle of mineral water before I retire this evening. Certainly, Your Excellency. For dinner, I shall have chicken cooked without sauces. Also, some boiled fish. I am very sorry, Your Excellency. There is no chicken or fish on the menu. Oh. Is he chef for this journey? The German? Oui, Your Highness. The cooking of Monsieur Klaus is admired all over Europe. It is a good that the train has secured his services. No doubt. Very well, I will have lamb. Again, without sauces. You've got to put it over big, whatever yourself. Sure, that is what I say all the time. With motor cars, it is no have measures. This steak is excellent! The pork is also very nice. Say, we haven't been introduced. That is very true. We haven't. You are not eating. I haven't much appetite this evening. How could I be so lucky to have found you? You found me? <laughs> Only after I'd chased you across three continents. The statues in the baggage car? Yes. I saw them loading the crate myself. They were uh, very good. They careful. left it huh. behind. They better be. If it's damaged, I might enjoy owning a railroad. Who knows? You travel often by train in your profession, mademoiselle? Yes, I do. You are a person most fortunate. I'd rather fly. Ah, oh, mais non. Not for me are the aeroplanes, with their sudden changes of altitude, and the capricious tossing about of the passengers <laughs> by the weather très mauvais. Non. In business, speed is often more important than comfort. No, it is more than the comfort. The trains, they lend themselves to the romance and the intrigue. All about us are people of all classes, of all nationalities, of all ages. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from one another. And at the end of the three days, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. For a few moments only, the skilled detective has the chance to study his fellow travelers, to watch their little stories unfold beneath the microscope of the trained eye. Tell me what you see. You as well, mademoiselle. We will make the little game of it, n'est-ce pas? Um, I see this as a good place to end for now, so till next time, goodbye.